G'day! In this video, I'm going to compare three different methods of applying extended release oxalic acid strips. So what, by different methods, what I mean is jib tape, which is what I've been using for quite a few years now, cardboard, a product that I'll talk about in a minute, and Swedish sponges. Before I go any further in the video, I just want to say I'm absolutely confident that all three of these methods work and they've been tested many times by other beekeepers. Randy Oliver has uh, posted the results of the experiments and tests that he did on comparisons of different application methods. So this video is proceeding on the basis of a major assumption which is that they all work. Having said that, as you'll see later in the video, I'm going to set up a test here at home to compare how well they do. As I said, there are three types of application of oxalic acid extended release that I'm going to look at in this video. The first one is the uh, jib tape. I've put out other videos on how I make these, how I use them, how I apply them, and what sort of results I'm getting. A wee while ago, a friend bought some of these. These are cardboard strips that are purpose made to put oxalic acid into beehives. They're made by a company here in New Zealand called Beequip. And for full disclosure, they contacted me having seen some of my videos and uh, said to me, why don't you use our cardboard strips instead of jib tape? And my answer was that a friend of mine had bought some and given them to me to try out. The first thing I did was to sit one of these strips in a cup of water and leave it there for a week. And when I came back a week later, it had not absorbed any water at all. And so I put them to one side and said, these are no good. And if they're not going to absorb anything, then they're not going to be useful in the application of oxalic acid. However, I told Russell from Bequip that by email and he responded by saying, yes, that's true. But if you put them in hot oxalic acid, they soak it up and they swell up. And he pointed me to a video that he's made showing how to uh, put the strips together and how to use them. So I had to eat humble pie. I had to, I immediately went out to the workshop, heated up some oxalic acid glycerin mix, soaked these, some of these strips in them, and sure enough, he was quite right. They soaked up the oxalic acid wonderfully. So, my cursory uh, assessment of whether they would work or not was completely wrong. And I have to admit right now at the beginning of this video that between a friend and I, we've just gone and bought 5,000 of these. The third method that I'm going to look at are what's known as Swedish sponges. They are sponges that are designed to be made for kitchen use. They are completely biodegradable and therefore are food safe and safe to put in a hive. And Randy Oliver is really keen on them, so I thought I'd try them out as well. So there are two parts to this video. One is uh, me reflecting on what the pros and cons are of the three different types, and I'm going to score them. I'm going to score them using a, a simple system, a point system, on the different attributes that are important to me when it comes to deciding what the best method is. My scoring system is done on the presumption that all three methods are equally effective. My scoring system takes five criteria into account, although one of them is effectiveness and I'm scoring all three in this exercise with full marks because I'm very confident that all three methods work. The five criteria are how easy are they to make, how well do they absorb oxalic acid, the ease of application into the hive, and then effectiveness. Do they kill the mites? I've included absorption into the mix because I actually ran into a problem with the jib tape in the last batch that I made. It must have been something different in the manufacture of the jib tape. When I put it into the hot oxalic acid, it 
they the strips would not absorb and soak up the oxalic acid the way they usually do. And that was a problem because that meant there wasn't as much oxalic acid in the strips. I ended up actually uh, taking a bucket of those strips out to the bee yard with liquid oxalic acid in the bottom of the bucket and shaking it up to get them sopping wet and putting them in dripping wet, which is not ideal. But I needed to do that in order to ensure that I was getting the right amount of oxalic acid into the hive for it to be effective. Doing that means that the bees would have got a short, sharp shock of oxalic acid and the extended re release uh, efficacy would be significantly reduced. But it was better than doing nothing. And so I used up all of those strips and I've now moved on to the cardboard strips. But I'm preempting my analysis. Let's start with my scoring system. My f I'm giving each of the five criteria the same weighting, which is completely subjective. And I'm scoring each characteristic out of 10 and my scoring is completely subjective. So what you're getting in this video is my subjective opinion. If you want to do it differently, that's fine. I'm doing it my way. So to score the three for ease of making, the jib tape I give five out of 10. It's, uh, it's relatively easy, as I've said in previous videos, it doesn't take a lot of time, but you do have to do it. Uh, the, the cardboard, I'm scoring at 10 out of 10. They get delivered to my back door by a courier, I open up the box and they're ready to put in the hive. The Swedish sponges, I'm scoring 8 out of 10. They come in packs of 3 here in New Zealand at the supermarket. By the way, they uh, sold under the brand uh, Wetex. And, but that's a New Zealand brand, won't apply anywhere else in the world. I just went to the supermarket, browsed through the shelf of sponges in the uh, cleaning department and found some that were Swedish sponges. So I have scored the Swedish sponges 8 out of 10 because there's a little bit of work involved. You have to tear them out of the packet and snip them in half. When I say you have to do that, the reason I do that is that that's the way Randy Oliver does it. Is it the right way? I will simply defer to Randy's good judgment. In terms of the absorption of the oxalic acid, I'm scoring the jib tapes at 5 out of 10. Now normally I, I would have said 10 out of 10, but because of the variability of the product available here in New Zealand, I can't rely on it to be absorbent. And that is an issue because uh, this whole process only really works if you put the right amount of oxalic acid into the hives. I'm scoring the cardboard 10 out of 10 for absorption and I'm scoring the Swedish sponges 10 out of 10. While I think about it, I've got to talk about this hat. This was a Christmas present from a friend. When they gave it to me, I looked at the B on the hat and I asked, what does the B stand for? And they just laughed. This morning, eight weeks later, the penny finally dropped. I'm a beekeeper. I guess I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Now let's look at costs. The jib strips cost 12 cents roughly each. That's including GST uh, and in New Zealand dollars. That doesn't include the time to make them. So if, uh, if you would take that into account, I don't, but if you wanted to, then that would push the price up even higher. That works out at about 96 cents for the eight strips that are needed to treat a double deep box. The cardboard, if you buy a big enough quantity, 5,100, comes at 14 cents per strip, which works out at $1.12 per double deep box. And the Swedish sponges come in a pack of three, each one's cut in half and that treats a double deep box. The pack costs $6, so that works out at $2 per hive. I'm going to give the jib strips 10 out of 10 because they're the cheapest. The cardboard 9 out of 10, they're a little bit more expensive. And the Swedish sponges I'm going to give 5 out of 10. In terms of ease of application, the 
easiest ones to apply uh, the Swedish sponges. Lift the box off, drop the sponges on top of the frames, and then put the box back on. Quick and easy. The jib strips are the hardest to apply. You have to remove a frame and they can be a little bit fiddly to drop down between the, fr the frames because they can get twisted or curved and it takes a bit of fiddling to get them in and therefore it's relatively slow to put them in. The cardboard strips are in the middle. They slide easily in between the frames and generally you don't have to remove any frames to get them in. So I'm going to give the jib 7 out of 10, the cardboard 10 out of 10, and the, and the Swedish sponges 10 out of 10. As you'll have seen as I've been going through these uh, scoring, I already decided right at the start to give effectiveness 10 out of 10 for all of them because I'm confident that they all work. So in summary, the cardboard comes out on top. I just want to reiterate, this is a subjective assessment, this is just my opinion. And as I said right at the beginning, I've already acted on it. My friend and I have already gone off and bought 5,000 of these. I do need to acknowledge that Bequip gave me about 90 odd strips free to try, but I made the decision to go to cardboard before I tried them because I'm confident that they work. Moving on to the second part of this video, I want to describe the little test that I'm doing in my backyard. I picked six hives that sit side by side in my backyard and I randomly went along them and said, right, these are the strips that I'm gonna put in those hives. I then, after I'd made that decision, did a mite test on each of those hives so I knew what my starting point was. I have inserted strips into those hives and I will do a follow-up video in seven or eight weeks where I do another mite test on all those hives so that I can get a feel for myself how they're doing. I'm particularly interested in the hive that is starting with a very high mite count so one of the six hives had a mite count of 28 mites per 300 bees. That's the highest mite count I've taken in any of my hives for some time. It happens to be the Hendrix hive, but I'm quite certain that, it, that it's not because it's in the Hendrix hive that it had a high mite count. Because in fact, if you go back and watch my videos about the Hendrix hive, if you don't know what that is, I'll put a link down below. The Hendrix hive is an experimental design uh, from Scott Hendricks in Northern Ontario, but the hive that has the high mite count only had bees in it for about three or four weeks before I did the mite test. I just, I set it up and I moved a new colony into that hive and therefore it can't have built up that level of mites in such a short time. It must have had the mites in it before I moved that colony into that configuration. One of the hives that I'm testing had a mite count of zero. It may just be a coincidence, but that was the hive that I'm doing another video series on with regard to the Beast Buster and the Hive Defender, which are fitted to it. Is there a relationship between the mite count in that hive and the fact that it has those things on it? I don't know. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and Thanks for watching.